In this video, we're gonna break down the Uber data engineer interview process and interview questions. The TLDR can't miss points about Uber. They have a unique culture screen. You need to show them that you are driven and competitive. If you are more senior, they will focus more on real-time processing. If you are more junior, they will focus on batch processing. And number three, Uber wants, like all other companies, to hear about your business impact. But at Uber, it's more of a red flag if you aren't talking about the business impact of your past projects when you talk about the work that you've done. Okay, so you know that Uber has created a real-time global platform. What you might not think about is it's a four-sided marketplace. You got riders, you got drivers, you got delivery drivers, and you got delivery eaters. So when you're thinking about their product, when you're thinking about their systems, keep that in mind. They rigorously evaluate candidates on real-time data processing, especially if you're more senior, scalability, they have huge scale, and business impact. The truth about Uber's culture is that when it first started, the CEO, Travis, hired a bunch of people that wouldn't take no for an answer. This was really cool, but in the long run, it led to this very aggressive culture that had a lot of toxic issues. They have since rebranded, they have a new CEO, and now what they are looking for is employees who know how to go get it, aka hustle. If you want to pass their culture screen, you can't do it unless you project that image. One unique thing about the data engineering work at Uber outside of the huge scale is that there is one central data engineering team at Uber that handles all the data. For example, let's say the trips data team that then is used by multiple teams across the company. A unique point here in how they actually fill out their organizational chart at a company like Meta, you're going to have about a ratio of one to one data scientists to data engineers. At a company like Uber, you're going to have more of a ratio of one-to-one -one for data scientists to data engineers, probably because Uber hires fewer data engineers and then assigns them a broader level of work. One very important thing here, every company has different things that they prioritize for their systems. At Uber, they prioritize consistency, availability, and low latency. For example, GPS data prioritizes low latency while payment transactions require strong consistency. When you're talking about your past project, highlight decisions that you made considering those same trade-offs to speak their language. They don't have a role designation for data engineers specifically, so it would be the same as software engineers. So you can find the corresponding levels in their org chart and the average compensation packages here. Uber does one thing that's kind of interesting in that not all candidates will be given the same vesting schedule for their stock. They might just offer a typical equally spread vesting schedule, but you can easily get, and sometimes they will actually offer you without you having to ask, a front-loaded vesting schedule, meaning you only need to work there shorter to get access to more of their stock. Optimization strategies for SQL are going to be key here. Um, their interview process is going to run through typically three different rounds, recruiter screen, tech screen, and final round. The final round is usually five conversations split between coding, system design, and behavioral. In all of these rounds, speed is the priority, whether it's coding, which is more common to be the focus for more junior level roles, or data modeling and system design for more senior level roles, you got to think speed. The recruiter screen is usually pretty typical. Um, be prepared to either showcase your past high-scale experience, or if you don't have past high-scale experience, be prepared to showcase the complexity of the work that you have worked on. The tech screen is normally going to be a 60-minute coder pad round. It's going to be divided into two parts, half SQL, half Python, two questions in each. You're going to want to study some of the basic concepts that we have laid out here. One thing that's important, though, with such a big code base like they have, you want to make sure that you're actually showcasing the same kind of stuff that you do on the job when you're writing out your queries, mainly strong naming conventions, adhering to best practices, and really avoid overly complex queries and subqueries, again, with your focus on speed, that only makes sense. 
One really cool thing about interviewing at Uber is that you have a bunch more access to good data about how they do their data engineering. They have a really great engineering blog. They're always posting retrospectives on important moves that they made in their technical infrastructure, such as transitioning from DynamoDB to Ledger Store. They kind of push the industry forward, publishing these highly technical blogs, talking about the challenges that they face when encountering these massive moves. So check out their engineering blog. You will not be disappointed. Again, finding that solution fast is way more important than the perfect solution. Okay, so these tech screen rounds that we had earlier are gonna be pretty similar to the coding rounds that you'll see at the onsite. There's gonna be probably up to three coding rounds for like level four or entry level paroles, and then like one or two coding rounds if you're L5 or above. So either way, regardless of your seniority, the coding rounds are going to assess you on these five factors. Real-time data processing, distributed systems, concurrency, memory optimization, and performance critical code. Do not make these mistakes in their coding rounds, whether to the tech screen or at the onsite. Do not ignore data freshness. Do not overlook their massive scale. Do not even think about giving vague trade-offs and do not over-focus on the stack. Now, system design versus data modeling rounds. The whole industry doesn't have a great designation for how these roles are, how these rounds are different. So you want to at first know that these could be either rounds that you could get. L5 candidates and above are going to have more of these rounds. L4 and below candidates are going to have less. And again, higher level candidates are going to be grilled on real time. Lower level candidates are going to be grilled on batch processing. So in the end, in the end of the day, you before the round starts, maybe even asking the recruiter, is this going to be a system design round or a data modeling round? And the basic idea to me is a scope. It's like, if this is system design, you're going to map out a full system architecture end to end. You're going to ship that MVP. It's not a theoretical discussion. It's if I had to do it in 40 minutes, here's how I would do it. If it's a data modeling round, that is a lot more about database structure and query optimization. Downleveling sucks. Don't let it happen to you. And if you're data modeling round, it's going to happen pretty much automatically if you have an ineffective schema design. The most likely reason this happens is because candidates mix normalized and non-normalized data. Because they have that really open philosophy for their engineering blog, they tend to have a bunch of documentation about the stuff that they use. So you can actually read up on the stuff that they use and if you've never used it before, can mention a little bit, but if you actually have experience with these technologies listed here, you can actually lean into that in the system designer data modeling rounds and really flex those muscles. The behavioral round. So again, if you really make this simple, Uber is more like Amazon than they are like Microsoft. Microsoft might have a particular culture, but they don't have a particular culture screen. Amazon, on the other hand, does. Uber, on the other hand, does. And the particular culture screen they have at the end of the day is really about finding competitive and driven candidates, go-getting, hustler. It's all revolving around the same thing. The way that I would think about it is like this. By the end of my behavioral round, my interviewer will remember one thing about me, and they will remember that I am driven. So if you want to ace the Uber data engineering interview rounds, check out our data engineering prep course. We go over system design, data modeling, coding, SQL, and behavioral. You can try it all for free at tryexponent.com.